The Environmental Policy Centre was established in the year 2000 with the support of the Rebson Fund. Its uh, role was to assist in policy making. Its role is not in science but in the aspects related to decision making which affects the environment. It has concentrated over the years on some different issues like contaminated land or biodiversity, but its main uh, issues have focused on multidisciplinary environmental issues which have involved the a team of, say, geologists, hydrologists, ecologists, economists, lawyers, planners, which come together to discuss a common issue with multi-facets, multi-issues. In the last year, we have started to focus more clearly on specific areas. Uh, the first area is on indicators. Indicators of sustainability, sustainable development, where we've, what are the trends, where we are going, and we hope in the coming year to prepare an outlook for Israel on environment and sustainability to the year 2030. The second area concerns Israel and the world, environmental diplomacy, negotiations concerning the environment. Third area is on environmental governance, who takes decisions, what are the institutions, what are the instruments that are available to them, how do international affairs and global discussions uh, concern how Israel governs its environment. The next area is on environmental economics. Economics and environment are increasingly intertwined according to what, how environment affects economic risks and financial risks and how economic instruments can help the environment in regulation and in market instruments. And the last area we will concentrate on a bit more in today is on environmental hazards and risks, risk taking, how to manage environmental risks. One of the areas that the Environmental Policy Centre focused on was in the Dead Sea, an area of risk, an area where changes have been happening and we, we uh, concentrated together a multidisciplinary team uh, which has prepared a policy document and is continuing to work on issues affecting the Dead Sea area. The main conclusion of the research, at least for the, from the first part of the uh, uh, research, which was based, focused on assessing the current situation and what will happen if the current situation or the current water uh, balance will be maintained for uh, the next, let's say, 50 years. And the main conclusion of that is first that the Dead Sea will never uh, die or will never eliminate it totally. There will be a water balance in the future uh, will uh, stabilize and the Dead Sea will decline by another 100 or 150 meters and will shrink from the current size of about 650 square kilometers to about 450 square kilometers. So this is one conclusion. The second one is that we are able to, to see and map and uh, quantify the main risks and damage which are forming because of that kind of processes related to the declining of the Dead Sea. And as such, if we know uh, in detail, professionally and scientifically, what will happen, one can plan properly to mitigate and accommodate uh, all activities uh, in line with the expectation of these uh, risks. The, the work of the Jerusalem Institute provided the background for a better evaluation of the situation and the alternatives to change the situation. The purpose of our work is to provide a basis for decision making. In the case of the Dead Sea, in, it was a government decision, Prime Minister's Office, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Infrastructure. It is also for local authorities in the area. It is also for the private sector like the Dead Sea Works and for environmental organizations, green organizations. In addition, we are now evaluating the environmental interest that Israel has in relation to the proposed peace conduit, the Red Sea, Dead Sea proposal.